Hi everyone, Melissa Wilson here, physician assistant and AIM at Melanoma's Ask an Expert. Um, thanks again for joining me for another installment of Melanoma 101. Um, today we're going to be talking about what happens to the skin when it's exposed to UV light. And it's actually a super interesting topic um, because there is many, many years of people thinking that when they get a tan it actually represents a really healthy glow. But um, I hope by the end of this little segment here you'll learn that a tan is your body's uh, defense mechanism against the sun and it's actually your body screaming for help. Um, and so right off the bat to get started, um, and if you watched my previous lecture about how moles form, then you know that this is a cross section of the skin. And if you don't know that, it might be worth it to go back and look at that if you don't understand that, you know, the layers of the skin and how melanin is produced. So when you look at this little graphic, I only drew the, the bottom layer of the epidermis because that's the part that's important to us because that's where the melanocytes live. And as you know from our prior lectures, melanocytes actually are what produce melanin, um, which gives our skin our pigment. Um, another job that melanin has, and it's an extremely important job, is that it protects us from UV light. And so melanin is sort of our defense mechanism of, against the DNA damage that UV light you know, can cause. Um, what is UV light? Obviously, it's the radiation or UV exposure that we get from the sun, but it can also come in the form of tanning beds, um, which again, we'll talk about at a later time. When um, your body is normally producing mel mel melanin, um, it actually looks a lot like this graphic over here, where the melanin is sort of evenly distributed throughout the keratinocyte, which is the epidermis skin, um, and it gives our skin its normal pigment. When it's exposed to UV light here because of the sun, what actually happens is that the body is receiving a signal that there's DNA damage that is occurring from the UV light, which is a form of radiation. And so when that happens and the DNA damage occurs, it tells, it does a couple of things, but one of the things that it does is it tells these melanocytes to produce more melanin. So there's a direct relationship to melanocyte or UV exposure to the melanocytes and the production of melanin. More UV light, more melanin is produced. And so when that happens, the melanocytes make lots more melanin because they know that they have a really important job to do. And what is that important job, you ask? It is actually to form a barrier around the keratinocyte or the cell to help try to protect the inside part, which is called the nucleus. And so um, the nucleus is what has all the DNA in your cell. And so the melanocytes actually migrate and they form a barrier around that nucleus and the keratinocyte to help protect it from that damage. And so I like to think of it as forming like a protective armored shell around yourself. So when UV light happens, the melanin literally, literally coats your cell in melanin to protect it from the sun, sort of like throwing a cloak over top of the cell. And so what that looks like in the skin is here. So if you can imagine with, you know, my wonderful drawing here, um, that these cells all have been exposed to UV light. And so they have since formed their melanin cloak around them to help protect them. And so when that happens, what you see on the skin, because as you know, once these cells get here and they're surrounded by melanin, they don't detach from each other. They're attached there forever. And so as these cells migrate up towards the skin, you actually see tan. So you see an even layer of pigment. And that happens in folks that don't freckle. So when you get a tan, it's actually a big line of armored keratinocytes or armored skin cells that have melanin surrounding them to protect them. And in opposition, when you look at somebody who freckles or who, um, a better way to kind of describe freckling in this scenario is somebody who incompletely tans, that just can't tan effectively. What actually happens without getting too technical is that not all of the keratinocytes receive that armored um, protection from the melanocytes. So you get sort of skip areas. And so you have armored, non-armored, armored, non-armored, armored. And so what happens is that is incompletely protecting the skin. So 
when you get to the layer that you can see, which is the top layer of the epidermis, you actually see pigment, no pigment, pigment, no pigment, pigment, no pigment. So it's not individual, you know, lesions on the skin that is causing the freckling. It's actually just when you look at it from down below, you have protected, non-protected, protected, non-protected. And the reason that that is so important is in these spaces is where DNA damage can occur. So folks that freckle or incompletely tan aren't fully protecting their skin cells from the UV light. And so that's where DNA damage is much more prevalent in folks that freckle than folks that don't. One last thing before we go is that your melanocytes, as I said, hold on to this pigment. pigment. So as the cells grow up um, or migrate up, as they die and are sloughed off, and subsequently replaced with new cells underneath, as your tan fades, it's actually just those melanocytes that had their armor on being sloughed off and replaced with other healthier cells that hopefully have not received DNA damage um, underneath. I hope that you now understand how you know, the UV light affects our skin and how tans form and, and now know that when our body is exposed to UV light, that tan that forms is actually our little cry for help that we are trying to protect ourselves from the sun. And so when you start to form a tan, um, know that you're getting a little too much sun and causing UV damage to the structures underneath. I hope that you'll join us next time for our next Melanoma 101 topic. It was a pleasure being here today and we'll talk to you soon.